days would pass and then they would come back and the predictions and any charms that Miss Blythe felt would help the client would be passed on. Mary would also sell potions and charms from her front um, and at this time she also began working part-time as an abortionist. Um, in spite of all of this being a very lucrative business, it wasn't enough for Mary and she soon turned to murder. The first person to personal people to die at, the hand, at Mary's hand were in 1803. It was three women from the Kitchen family. Mary befriended them and would help working out in their drapery shop in Leeds. She also, to kind of get in their good books, um, she gave them free fortunes from Miss Blythe. Um, suddenly one day one of the women fell ill and Mary offered to nurse her back to health and she had a special powder that she prepared that she fed to this woman but it didn't take long and all three were dead. Mary told the locals um, around the town that the plague had killed these three women and the locals were scared of infection, scared of getting the plague themselves and so they said nothing. Um, when the creditors came to look at the estate that had been left behind by the kitchens, they found that the house and shop had been stripped bare and there were a bunch of accounting ledgers that were missing, but at the time no one suspected Mary. Mary moved on and was never short of customers. By 1806 she had turned her hand to apocalyptic prophecy and began spreading the story of the prophetic hen of Leeds, claiming a chicken she owned was laying eggs inscribed with Christ is coming. People flocked to Mary for protection from the end of days because she claimed that was something that her and Miss Blythe could offer them. Um, but it was in fact Mary who was writing the inscriptions on the eggs. What she was doing is she was getting vinegar, she was inscribing Christ is coming on the eggs and then she was placing them back inside the chicken's oven so that it would appear that they were freshly laid uh, with the message on. She was eventually caught by a local doctor but there wasn't any sort of punishment that she was given at that time. By the spring of 1806, word of Mary's talents had reached a couple in Bramley, which is on the outskirts of Leeds, I believe is near Kirkstall Abbey. If you're in England um, and watching this, that will probably mean a lot more to you than if you're one of my American viewers. Um, they were named William and Rebecca Perigo. Rebecca was suffering from a nervous disorder as well in a pain in her side that she believed were the result of a curse that had been placed upon her. Mary offered to refer the case to Miss Blythe, um, whose advice was that they were to give some silk bags, or they would give some guineas, and these were to be the guinea notes, which were valued about one pound and five pence, and these were to be sewn into some silk bags and these would be placed in the corners of Rebecca's bed where they should remain undisturbed for 18 months and Miss Blythe would continue to work on their case during this time. Miss Blythe demanded more money and more magical supplies as well as fine china, silver and even asked the very ghost to buy her a new bed. She claimed she needed all of these items for supernatural reasons. Um, and with each demand, the couple handed over their cash and then they would burn the letters as Miss Blythe instructed them to do so that the evil spirits could read what was in the letters. Um, the Pericos had already given Mary a small pot fortune for Miss Blythe when they received a note informing them, my dear friends, I am sorry to tell you, you will take an illness
Christmas in the month of May next, either to, to one or both, but I think both, but the works of God must have its course. Miss Blythe, though, claimed she could help. Of course she did. Mary supplied them with a powder that was to be sprinkled into some puddings that the couple should eat, along with a special honey. They were told no one else was to eat the magic food, and if the doctor was summoned, the, this would only make the magical illness worse, so don't call a doctor. The powders were of course poison, and soon both Rebecca and William fell violently ill. William wasn't as ill as Rebecca, as um, he had commented that while his wife managed to eat the whole pudding, he could usually only manage a spoonful, so less of the poison got into his system. Anyway, on May the 24th, 1807, Rebecca passed away from the poison. William did, um, William continued to rely on Miss Blythe and Mary as she asked for more and more money, even asking that he give her items of Rebecca's clothing. As the years passed, William's faith began to waver. He wondered why he was giving Miss Blythe all these, this money and none of the cures she was giving him were working. Um, he decided that he would unpick the stitching on the silk bags that um, if you remember earlier, they were filled with the guineas that the Pregos had given her, had given Mary to give to Miss Blythe. Um, but when he opened them, he found that they just contained paper and like bits of metal, so not the money that she'd been given. William confronted Mary and she promised that the next day she'd return and settle things, but when she'd returned, um, it was a trap and a constable was waiting and she was arrested. Her house was searched and the Perico's gifts to Miss Blythe were found. Um, Mary was put on trial for murder at York Castle on March the 7th, 1809. Her defence was to just deny everything. Um, Witnesses came forward from across all of Leeds, basically um, with tales of extortion at the hands of Mrs. Bateman. It was at this point her role in the unexplained and unexpected deaths of the kitchens was became apparent. Um, also during the course of the trial, Mary's handwriting was matched to that of the letters from Mrs. Moore and Miss Blythe, and so it was found that basically these were made up, and it was just Mary writing the letters. Um, the final nail in the coffin was after a doctor analysed the remain of the Perico's honey that they'd been given, and found it contained mercury, which is poisonous, um, and a bottle that was found in Mary's possession was also found to contain a mix of rum, oatmeal and arsenic. Um, arsenic is that it was quite a common thing used to poison people um, in the 19th century, I think, because um, it was so deadly so fast. Um, the jury found her guilty based on all of the evidence that had come forward. Um, and given that she had murdered people, it looked very likely that she would be sentenced to death. Um, and Mary Bateman realised this, and so she decided she would, um, as it was called, plead the belly, which basically means she said, wait, I'm pregnant, you can't kill me, you can't hang me because I'm pregnant, and because back then, if you were a woman, if you were pregnant, any death sentence would have to wait until after the child was born. Uh, so you'd buy yourself like nine months, say. Um, but the judge ordered um, an examination be done and the doctors proved that she wasn't pregnant, it was all a lie. Um, and Mary was hung on March the 20th, 18. 
her skin um, because they dissected her, her skin was actually tanned and sold as leather charms to ward off evil spirits and was also used to bind several books, one of which um, eventually came into the possession of, I think it was George the Seventh. Um, and uh, skeletal remains were actually on display. Um, they're not anymore, but they were on display at Leeds Metropolitan University, but they are now in the archives of Leeds University. Anyway, that was the story of Mary Bateman, known as the Yorkshire Witch. Um, next week, I think we are possibly going to be doing a, another female serial killer. Um, I haven't decided, I've got a few on my list, but um, I may do next week Mary Ann Boone, I think it is, who was the she's considered one of the first female serial killers um, and she was from Durham around here anyway um, I hope you've enjoyed this video if you have any suggestions for any cases you would like me to cover